uh-oh, this is not good. Yes, this is exactly what you think it is. It's a processor, a brand new one, a Ryzen 7 9800X3D, and it has burn marks on it. What is all this about? Well, if you want to, you can go over to Reddit. I will provide the link in the YouTube description down below and read through all this stuff. But I suspect you're probably not going to do that unless you have or you're thinking about purchasing a 9800X3D because currently this is the fastest gaming processor on the planet. Now, I'm just going to be giving you a little bit of a lowdown on this, a general overview of all this information and supposedly what is going on. However, after I'm finished doing that, I'm going to hand it over to Google's Notebook LM and let them go through it all. So this particular Reddit user is saying that their brand new AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D CPU and the MSI Tomahawk X870 motherboard burned up after installation. The user initially believed that a BIOS incompatibility caused the issue, but later shared pictures of a damaged socket and bent pins, leading many users to speculate that the CPU was incorrectly installed. While some users blamed the motherboard, others cautioned against jumping to conclusions. That's a good idea. Citing previous instances of similar CPU failures with the AMD 7800X3D and pointing to user error as the likely cause. I mean, can you imagine installing a brand new system all pretty expensive, right? And then you turn it on and poof. Yeah, that's never a good sign. But it will be interesting to see over time if there are other people that experience the same problem. What are your thoughts on this? Well, now I'm going to hand it over to Google's Notebook LM. Enjoy. Today, we're looking at uh, this crazy story making the rounds Yeah. about a brand new AMD 9800X3D CPU. I saw this. That appears to have just completely fried. Yeah, it looks like it. And our source today mm. is this Reddit thread. Okay. Where the original poster, let's just call them OP. Sure. Shared pictures of the damage. Oh, wow. And it just sparked this whole debate. I bet. So <laughs> if you're listening to this deep dive and you've got this whole stack of comments. Right. You want to know what happened. Yeah. Was this a bad CPU or? Is this like a widespread issue? Right. Or did the user just mess something up? With the new CPU, is yeah. it user error or is it something else entirely? Yeah. So we're going to try and get to the bottom of this okay. and figure out, you know, what are the potential causes of the CPU just dying Right. using the wisdom of the Reddit community. Sounds good. So yeah. the OP posted these pictures showing these like burn marks oh, wow. on their brand new 9800X3D. I knew, huh? And they said their PC wouldn't even pee posty. No poo ST. So that's, yeah. that's a pretty bad sign, yeah. right? That's like the power on self-test. Right. Like the first thing your computer's supposed to do. The very first thing. When you hit that power button. Right. And if that's not working. And it's just not happening. That usually means. Like, nope, not happening. A hardware problem. Yeah. Hardware problem for sure. Yeah, for sure. And on top of that. Oh, wow. They were getting this zero zero error code. Zero zero. Which, as I understand it, yeah. is basically a generic CPU error. It is. It's like the most generic. It doesn't really doesn't really tell you anything. Clear things down. Yeah, just that something's wrong. Yeah, it's like thanks. I know something's wrong. Uh huh. But not what. Yeah, but what is wrong? Right. So this is where I think yeah. the Reddit community mm -hmm. really shines because all these users are just jumping in. I love that. Trying to figure out what happened. Yeah, it's like a. It's like a digital who did it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Offering all these theories. Oh, I bet. From, you know, is it a BIOS issue? Right. Is it a faulty component? Do they install it wrong? Um, yeah. And some of them are just wild. Oh, I bet. But then amidst all this chaos, yeah. there are some red flags that start popping up. Okay, like what? Like some users pointed out that there might be damage uh -oh. to the CPU socket itself. To the socket. Like bent pins oh, or chipped plastic. Yeah, if you damage the socket. Which that, can totally mess up your system. That can cause all sorts of problems. Yeah. yeah. And here's where things get really interesting. Okay. Because the OP says, mm. well, I didn't notice any bent pins That's at tough. first. All right. Yeah. But admits that maybe they accidentally damaged the socket. During installation. During installation. Oh, no. So now we've got this like. Yeah. Classic debate. The classic debate. Is this user error right. or was there a defect? Was there a problem already? In the motherboard mm. that caused this whole thing. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. And then to add fuel to the fire. Oh, really? Some users are bringing up what? the AMD Ryzen 7 
7800X3D launch. Oh, yeah. Where there were reports of similar CPU failures. Oh, no. And those were linked to too much voltage. Too much voltage. Yeah. Being applied to the CPU's SOC. To the SOC. The system on a chip. Okay, so for people who don't know, yeah. what's the SOC? Yeah, what is that? Well, the SOC handles a ton of crucial functions Okay. on the CPU. Uh-huh. Like, imagine it's the brain of your CPU. Oh, okay. And if you overload it with voltage, yeah. it can fry. That makes sense. Yeah. So some users are saying... What are they saying? Hey, you need to undervolt this CPU. Undervolt. Or manually adjust the SOC voltage in the BIOS. In the BIOS. Okay. As a preventative measure. They're basically saying, don't let your motherboard... Yeah. Fry your fancy new CPU. Right. Don't let this happen to you. Right. And then that brings up a whole other question. What's that? Is undervolting always the answer? Is it always the answer? Because it can definitely help prevent damage right. from too much voltage. But it can impact performance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So is it a necessary precaution mm -hmm. with these newer CPUs or is it overkill? Yeah. Is it too much? Okay. So we've got this potential voltage problem. Yeah. we got voltage. We've got right. this mysterious socket damage. And nobody knows if it's the user or... Yeah. Is it the user? Is it a manufacturing defect? A defect. Yeah. And this is where things get really interesting. Okay. Tell me. Because Gamers Nexus... Oh, wow. ...saw this thread. No way. The tech YouTube channel... Yeah. Gamers Nexus. ...offered to buy the parts from Probably the not. OP. They're going to investigate. Yeah, they're going to investigate this. Wow. So we're going to get like a second opinion. That's amazing. Like, from like one of the most. From one of the best. Respected sources. Yeah. In the tech world. In the entire tech world. So um, Gamers Nexus is known for their in-depth analysis. Mm -hmm. So their findings could really be the key oh, to yeah. solving this whole puzzle. I can't wait to see what they find. Me too. I'm already like on the edge of my seat. I know. Me too. What do you think they're going to find? Well. Will they be able to pinpoint what caused this? That's a good question. Yeah. It's hard to say for sure. Yeah. But they definitely have the tools. Yeah. And the expertise. To dig deep. Yeah. They'll figure it out. Maybe they'll find a manufacturing defect. Right. Maybe it'll be user error. Yeah. But either way, <laughs> this analysis is going to be so valuable. It's going to be great for everybody. Not just for the OP, uh -huh. but for like the whole PC building community. Yeah, we can all learn from this. Because oh, it's yeah. not just about right. one fried CPU. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding. It's about the bigger picture. What went wrong. Yeah, how do we prevent this? And learning from it. Exactly. So that's really the whole point of this deep dive. Okay. We're going to examine all the evidence. Right. Analyze all these theories. That sounds good. And hopefully extract some valuable lessons for yeah. anyone out there who's building a PC. I'm excited. So yeah. stay tuned, folks. Yeah, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of our deep dive mm -hmm. into this whole scorched CPU mystery. All right, buckle up. You know, it's amazing how much you can learn yeah. from those burn patterns. Mm. Like, it's like an electronic autopsy. Oh, wow. You can trace the path of the burn. Right. And sometimes pinpoint the exact location of the uh, short circuit. Okay and get a better idea of what might have caused it. Wow, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. So it's not just random damage. No. There's a story. There's a whole story. Written in those burn marks. Yeah. So what kind of things can we learn from that? So if the burns are concentrated mm -hmm. around certain pins, okay. that might suggest a problem yeah. with those specific connections. Okay. So it could be like a power delivery issue right. where too much voltage went through those pins. Yeah. Or it could be a signal integrity problem. Signal integrity. Yeah. I've heard that term. Yeah. But I don't really know what it means. Yeah. So yeah. imagine you're trying to have a conversation mm -hmm. in a really noisy room. Uh, and it's hard to hear right. what the other person is saying. Because there's so much background noise. Right. Because that signal... Their voice is being disrupted uh, okay. by all the noise. Okay, so that's kind of... That's kind of like signal integrity. Okay. But instead of sound waves, yeah. we're talking about electrical signals. Okay. Traveling through the components on your motherboard. So it's like having a clear connection... Yeah, exactly. ...in like a high-speed network. Yeah. Where any disruption can cause... Can cause problems. ...data loss or corruption. Exactly. So in the case of our fried CPU... Yeah. ...a signal integrity problem... Mm-hmm. Could have led to like a surge of electricity. A sudden surge. Causing the burn. Right. And those burn patterns can help us determine oh, okay. whether that surge originated from the CPU itself, right. the motherboard, right. or somewhere else in the system. Wow. It's like we're piecing together a puzzle. It is. Using those burn marks as clues. Yeah. It's like detective work. I wish I knew more about electronics. Well, you know, yeah. even without an electrical engineering degree, right. there are still some key takeaways here. Okay. Like what? First, those burn patterns. Mm-hmm. 
They're valuable evidence. Okay. If you ever have a hardware failure, yeah, take pictures of the damage okay. before you do anything else. Like document the scene of the crime? Exactly. Okay. It could help you diagnose the problem mm -hmm. or even support an RMA claim. Right. If you mm -hmm. need to get something replaced. Exactly. So what other advice what else? would you give to someone who's like in the OP situation? Right. They're looking at a fried CPU. And their computer won't PRST. And they're freaking out. What should they do? Well, first, yeah. don't panic. Okay. <laughs> Easy to say. I know. I know. Yeah, when you're staring at it's your broken computer parts. But taking a methodical approach okay. can save you a lot of headaches. All right, so methodical approach. Yeah. So start with the basics. Okay. Are all the cables connected? Right. Is the power supply working? All that stuff. All that stuff. Okay. And then if everything seems to be in order, yeah. you can start looking for clues. Like we're doing here. Exactly. With this Reddit thread. Right. Speaking of which, a lot of users were talking about RMAs. Oh, yeah, RMAs. Do you think the OP has a good chance? That's a good question. Of getting their parts replaced? I mean, it's hard to say. Yeah. For sure, without knowing right. specific policies. Of like AMD and MSI. Of AMD and MSI, yeah. Right. But I think the fact that Gamers Nexus is involved oh, yeah. could actually help. Really? How so? Well, Gamers Nexus has a reputation mm -hmm. for being thorough yeah. and unbiased. Right. So their findings will carry some weight. Okay. And they could potentially influence the RMA decision. So if Gamers Nexus says... Right. If they say... Hey, we think this is a manufacturing defect. Yeah. That would help the OP. That would definitely strengthen their case. It's like having an expert witness... Exactly. ...on your side. Yeah. So even if the OP made a mistake... Right, even if they did. If Gamers Nexus finds a problem... Sort of like a faulty component. ...with the part itself... Yeah. ...then... AMD or MSI might be more likely. Might be more likely. To honor the RMA. Exactly. And then beyond that, yeah. their findings. Yeah. What Gamers Nexus finds could have like wider implications. Could affect everybody. For other PC builders. Yeah. Right? They might uncover a design flaw. Right. Or a potential issue. With these new CPUs. That other people are having too. Yeah. So their investigation could lead to, yeah. you know, improvements in manufacturing. Right. Better BIOS updates. Uh huh. Maybe even changes in how we install these things. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. It shows how one person's bad experience I, can help everyone else. We can all learn from it. Yeah. It's a reminder that we're all in this together. Yeah, we are. Learning from each other's mistakes. Yeah. Helping each other figure out this crazy world. Absolutely. Of PC hardware. Yeah, it's always changing. Yeah. It's exciting. So you were about to say... Oh, yeah. You wanted to shift gears a little bit. I did. Okay, what were you going to say? You were saying about shifting gears. Yeah, so we've talked about the technical stuff mm -hmm. and the RMA. Yeah. But there's another side to this story. Okay. A human side. Oh, yeah. Like, imagine how bummed the OP must be. I bet. They spent all that money. On a brand new CPU. Yeah, the top of the line yeah. just dies. Before they even got to use it. Yeah, before they even saw the bio screen. Oh, that's heartbreaking. It really is. Yeah, it's a good reminder that... Even in the digital world, yeah. things can go wrong. And it can be really disappointing. It can be a real bummer. Yeah. yeah. It's like all your hopes and dreams just go it, up in it, smoke. Literally. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So speaking of things going wrong, uh? some users in the thread yeah. were talking about Updating the BIOS. Oh, the BIOS. Using that BIOS flashback feature. Right. BIOS flashback. Do you think that could have helped in this situation? It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Because that lets you update the BIOS. Right. Without even having a CPU installed. Without the CPU. Yeah. Which can be really handy yeah. in cases like this. Right. So if there was like a bug. Yeah. A bug in the BIOS. That was causing the CPU to get too much voltage. Yeah. That is possible. A BIOS update could have fixed it. Could have prevented the whole thing. So it's always a good idea. To check for BIOS updates. Especially with a new platform. Yeah, like AM5. Yeah, AM5 is still pretty new. It's good advice. Yeah. I'm learning so much from this deep dive. Me too. It's a fascinating case. But I still have one question. Okay, what's that? Do you think this whole thing... This whole fried CPU fiasco... You know, could be like a side effect. A side effect of what? Of AMD pushing the limits oh, with yeah. their new AM5 platform. That's a good question. Like... You know when you try to innovate yeah. and push the boundaries? Uh-huh. There's always a risk. Of things going wrong. Yeah, you're trying to yeah, balance right? innovation and stability. Yeah, it's a tough balance. It is, and sometimes early adopters. Yeah. They hit those snags. Right, they're like the beta testers. Yeah, in a way. So the OP might be helping. Unintentionally. Yeah, unintentionally helping future AM5 builders. Yeah, by discovering these problems early on. So their pain yeah. could lead to improvements for everyone. Mm, exactly. Their experience could help make things better. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. So what's the biggest takeaway? The biggest takeaway for me yeah. is the power of community. 
Oh, yeah. Like this Reddit thread. Yeah. It shows how people come together mm -hmm. to share knowledge. Right. To help each other. Yeah. Troubleshoot problems. Even when things go wrong. Yeah. Everyone was trying to help the OP. Yeah. It's really inspiring. It really is. It shows the spirit of the PC building community. Yeah. We're all in this together. Yeah. So to everyone out there building PCs, mm -hmm. stay informed. Yes. Be careful with your components. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to ask for help. There's no shame in asking for help. Because you never know your experience. Might, good or bad. Could help someone else. Exactly. We all learn from each other. Well said. Happy building, everyone. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.